Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this new figure showcase and review we're going to be looking at the Rising Force Toys Hyena figure. So what we're going to do with this video, we're going to have a detailed look at it in both of his modes, help you decide how you want to display him. We're going to have a look at the entire contents of the packaging so we can see his accessories and his instructions. We are of course going to do some comparisons with him and his original Generation 1 self and of course his latest incarnation in the Generations toy line and see how he fares up against other third-party company uh, legend scale sized figures to give us an idea of his scale as well. So as you can see, quite a lot to get through with this video today. So as I pop all these away, I'd like to remind anybody who's not subscribed to this channel, if I'd like to hit that subscribe button for me now, please, because it really will help me out. And the other is to thank Shows eStores, which is where this was purchased was from. And as you can see, they got it to me nice, quickly and safely. And indeed, there is going to be a direct link for this product in the description. So this little guy is quite Interesting to be fair, this is my first experience of Rising Force toys. I had never heard of them. It is yet another third party company legend scale figure, and it is very, very intricate, very detailed, and in some cases, very, very fiddly. We're going to start off in robot mode, even though he comes packaged in his alternate mode. Let's have a look at the head sculpt, which is very nice, nice and basic, but it, it's exactly the way Drag Strip used to look. So I'm going to refer to him as Drag Strip. Uh, the head sculpt will turn around. You can see it's on like a mushroom peg um, and it does move backwards and forwards as well. So you've got quite a lot of articulation on that, to be honest. Um, for those of you who are unaware, the reason why he's not called Drag Strip is because Rising Force Toys, unlike Yolo Park and companies, uh, you know, like RoboSen, etc. and Super 7, they're all licensed by Takara to make the products. These aren't, so they make transforming robots of the characters we like, but they can't use their names. So the articulation in the head is brilliant. The shoulders, you can see, is ball and socket, so it will go all the way around. If you wanted to, you could also include this little bit of extra movement there, but that is, of course, just for transformation same as this these will fold in and out but that is mainly for transformation you've got an elbow joint which will bend up um, I don't think it swivels or don't think it's supposed to swivel in all honesty the wrist does swivel and go backwards and forwards as well you've got a waist swivel you've got a kick all the way up a kick all the way back a knee bend an ankle tilt and rock again highly detailed highly intricate and as i say in some cases as you'll see by the transformation process i've uploaded separately as a tutorial highly fiddly the box itself is beautiful nice and basic yellow there's a picture of him in his robot mode and that's pretty much it the figure as i said does come packaged in the alternate mode like so the instructions to be honest aren't the greatest it is so true what i was warned that when i was getting into third party companies that the instructions are the greatest that is really difficult but it took some time i managed to work it out um, and it comes in the clamshell because again not licensed by the same rules as hasbro so they can still use plastic in their packaging let's just quickly stand this back up there is his single blaster and it looks a lovely again super basic really nice uh, but you can wield this in either hand i'm not put it in it's a brand new toy <clears throat> it will go in i'm not going to push it all the way in you've got the engine there which of course is i'm trying to work out if it's chrome or whether it's just good paint i think it's metallic looking paint to be honest it definitely doesn't feel like die cast uh the wheels again have got pretty much the same that's a metal stud obviously or pin rather but yeah nice small intricate maybe a little bit too many parts here you can see um where um they but it's all pieced together my first impressions is it's good it reminds me of magic square but these are much much cheaper than magic square and i suppose that's perhaps why there might be a stress joint there or this is a teeny bit loose there's a few things that they're not damaged they're not you know they're just i suppose not ideal maybe i'm being overly picky we will see um, and I suppose judge for ourselves. There's a Generation 1 Bumblebee to give you an idea of scale. Here is a Generation 1 drag strip. And again, this is more based on the cartoon version of him rather than his G1 toy. So with regards to current figures and to give you a better idea, um, I suppose, of scale and size, there's a Deluxe Strong Arm and there's a Core Class Optimus. So pretty much just a fraction bigger uh, than your core class in honesty uh, with regards to other third-party companies 
New Age, Magic Square, Iron Factory, and Doctor Wu. So yeah, pretty much standard legend scale. Doctor Wu's classed as I suppose a sort of micromaster uh, size and scale. Uh, not much more to say about him in robot mode, to be honest. It's going to be interesting to see the fully combined mode of him because he is a stunter con um, and he's obviously got no extra kibble or combining parts that come with him. So I'm presuming that they're all going to come with Motormaster uh, because there's literally nothing else with him. Let's have a quick look at him in the alternate mode then just to finish off. OK, we're back for the final time with him in his alternate mode. Quick apologies, no transformation process on this video. Couple of reasons. One is to keep the main length of the video down. And two is because I've uploaded a tutorial video where you'll see just how tricky and indeed intricate this figure is. However, when you get it to alternate mode, it does look pretty good, but you can pretty much gauge by all, I suppose, the parts which fold, tuck, etc. all the way. It is really... I'm not going to say overly complicated. I think if I hadn't have had an experience with Magic Square, then this would have been maybe a bit too complicated for me. I just think that perhaps, no, I'm being a little bit too harsh. It's perhaps just a little bit too intricate. And because it's too intricate, you get all these uh, marks, not marks, you know what I mean? Separation parts where all the transformation processes do take place. So perhaps it didn't need to be um, as difficult. As you can see, the wheels are all on their own individual pins though, so that's pretty good. Um, and I suppose you have got a visible head, but it is only the part underneath. Talking about the differences between Magic Square, this guy is only $26, so it's about half the price um, of a Magic Square figure. Um, and maybe that's the reason, as I say, the quality to me doesn't seem to be um, as great it's not bad it's not falling apart but i say this is you can see that's a little bit loose that's how it came to me uh, but it holds everything in place no problem there's nothing detrimental it's just perhaps me being a little bit too picky uh, there is place on the front there where you can attach the blaster i've not put this in yet so you can see it's really really stiff i'm just going to rest it in the top like that i don't really like it to be honest um i think the only reason it just sort of works with the g1 figure is it's more so coming from the back interestingly enough it is pretty much exactly the same size as the g1 that is really interesting i never realized that at all even the back wheels look to be exactly the same size look at that it pretty much is isn't it it's exactly the same size if i take the weapons off both of them you can see wow that really is a great likeness but a much much more obviously updated version let me shift the original out of the way to give you an idea again of scale there's your g1 bumblebee with loose joints who is tiny there's a new age hound which again is tiny well, it's not Hound, it's the Jurassic Park version of the Hound mould, just before people jump in and correct me, which I know I was getting wrong. World's smallest Transformers, Takara Alert. Um, and there is the newest version, the deluxe version of him, which is absolutely huge, in all honesty. Um, a couple of, I suppose, comparisons. Masterpiece Trailbreaker. So, yeah, nowhere near Masterpiece. Definitely legend scale size. Uh, Legends scale New Age Shattered Glass Grimlock or Imir. And there we go. Let's have a quick proper look at him then just to round the video off. So again, we've got this. It's definitely not a die cast. It's two different. You've got good metal grey there and your silver in the middle. It's held together there so it doesn't flop or pick up or down. The spoiler you can move up and down. Um, and of course, there's nice details there. There's nothing else to say about the alternate mode. I'm really intrigued now to see the rest and to see how they manage to get him into a full combiner. There we go. That's my first experience with regards to Rising Force Toys. It's not a bad one. I suppose, again, it's one of them uh, occasions where, you know, you get what you pay for. It is good. It is intricate. It's highly articulate for the price. Um, but again, it's not as perhaps as good as your Magic Square and your New Age. And that's because it's cheaper. Anyway, let me know what you think of him in the comments, guys. Take care.